What's happening in Mexico's skies? Why is it that in the last 15 years, unidentified flying objects have flown through these skies with a frequency that seems to be steadily increasing? The number of witnesses is multiplying too, and thanks to technology, so is the number of amateur films. The media have documented these incredible episodes, and many people are now wondering what's happening in Mexico. The most organized of them are a group of researchers who have begun an unprecedented project in the history of modern ufology, systematically studying and monitoring the sky. Everything is filmed, recorded, and scientifically documented. The team's name is the Vigilantes, and their work has produced an incredible number of photographs, testimonies, and films, which are analyzed very carefully. The amount of material was so impressive that it led the researchers to think of Mexico as a true contact point. It all began with the total solar eclipse that took place in Mexico on the 11th of July, 1991, coinciding with an ancient Mayan prophecy. The prophecy foretold that such an eclipse in Mexico would mark the beginning of humanity's encounter with the Lords of the Stars. It was all written in the Dresden Codex, one of the few documents that escaped the wrath of the Spanish conquistadors. But let's get back to the eclipse. On the 11th of July, 1991, millions of people and hundreds of video cameras followed this spectacular astronomical event. Initially, nobody seemed to notice the presence of an anomalous aircraft hovering in the sky over Mexico City. But when reviewing the footage later, many people noted the intruder. It seemed to be made of metal that reflected the sunlight, and it was shaped like a classic flying saucer. The sighting created quite a stir, and even the TV media became involved, especially researcher and journalist Jaime Massan. In the days following the eclipse, the staff of Televisa, one of Mexico's largest private TV networks, was flooded with videos of the mysterious aircraft. The public's curiosity grew. What exactly was the object filmed during the eclipse? Where did it come from? Could it possibly be a confirmation of the mysterious Mayan prophecy? Demetrio Feria, one of the first members of the vigilantes, remembers that day well. My experience began in June of 1991. Before the great eclipse that took place in Mexico on the 11th of July of that year. That was when I decided to film them. I already had a video camera and I wanted to know whether the phenomenon was real or just a bunch of lies, special effects or something like that. And luckily, I managed to capture them on film. I devoted quite a bit of time to them between June and November, and I began filming them one dawn in November at 5 in the morning. Ruben Villatoro also remembers the eclipse well. That was the moment he decided to become a vigilante. After the total solar eclipse on the 11th of July 1991, Jaime Moussan went on television and said that at the time of the eclipse, there were people who had filmed the UFOs with their video cameras. I decided that it was important to follow their example. I bought a video camera, and over the years, I've filmed several objects flying over Mexico City. The event during the eclipse seemed to have opened a Pandora's box of UFO sightings. Thus, Mexico saw the beginning of one of the most intense waves of sightings in history. Without a doubt, 
The remarkable availability of cameras and video cameras improved the potential for sightings. But the number of sightings only began to grow exponentially after the eclipse of the 11th of July 1991. Footage from Mexico traveled around the world, amazing those who saw the videos and bringing much joy to scholars who had never had so much material to analyze. Of all the investigators, Jaime Marsan is the most responsible for having researched and disseminated the large quantity of video footage captured in Mexico by both occasional witnesses and by the vigilantes. The idea to start this group was also his. The vigilantes group was Jaime's idea. He was the one to form the group, and when I arrived, it was already in existence. The group still exists. Its members are few, but those who have stayed are at the forefront of this research. Today, Jaime Marsan directs and coordinates the vigilante's work alongside researcher Pedro Avila. His videos of unidentified flying objects have circulated all around the world, generating a great deal of interest. For over 15 years, Pedro has lived the life of a near recluse in his small room, due to a debilitating illness that has practically immobilized him. Despite this, Pedro Avila has made some very important contributions to international ufological research from within his small world. A small window and a piece of sky are his only contact with the outside world, which he observes carefully from the first hours of the day well into the night. He's a full-time vigilante, and without a shadow of a doubt, He's one of the best. A lot of people ask me or wonder why most of my videos were filmed from this little window. Well, there are two reasons. First of all, I have a little window no more than 1.8 meters in length and 1 meter in height, and my visual angle is quite limited. Therefore, it's a bit difficult for me to make out these objects. And in this little space, I've managed to record everything that I've filmed to the present. The second reason is that some time ago, I was diagnosed with an illness known as progressive muscular dystrophy which obviously gets worse with time. And now I can't leave the house like I used to. In the past, I used to film these videos from the garden or the garage. But when my health grew delicate, I was forced to stay in my room. I imagined, I thought that this would limit my ability to film videos, since I didn't have the same extent of sky that I could see from the garden. However, I was greatly surprised because I realized that from here, from this little window, I've recorded the best videos I've ever shot. Pedro is a true example of extraordinary passion and willpower. Armed with his camera, video camera and binoculars, he has captured some of the best footage of unidentified flying objects ever filmed. collection includes some light spheres and the famous flotillas. We know that the most common objects in UFO investigation are spheres, which can be a single white sphere or silver spheres, black blue, red, or multicolored. Sometimes there may be only two of them, and other times we've been able to film flotillas composed of over 300 or 500 objects. Often they shift one way and the other. They interact. These are the most interesting sightings. One of the most important videos of spheres was recorded in Mexico in 2002. 
The images clearly show two spheres revolving in the sky. Ordinarily, the spheres appear to be shiny and white, but in this film, the sphere's metal form is clearer than ever before. This footage confirms statements made by many other witnesses who claim to have seen similar spheres fly through the sky and suddenly change state, going from luminous to metallic. In addition to flotillas and spheres, Pedro has also filmed some unconventional flying objects of a totally unexplained appearance. In one occasion, I once filmed six dark objects that looked like watermelon seeds, like little black seeds. These six objects formed a shape in the sky very much like a flower with six petals. The strange thing is that when we zoom in, when we analyze the video, when we add filters and all the rest, we can't seem to find a structure. In other words, the objects are moving rhythmically, with an amazing synchronicity, and always keeping the same position as if they were a flower, spinning, going up and down, but always keeping the same distance, despite there being no structure between the objects. Avia's video is the first to show an object of such a shape flying in broad daylight. Pedro Avia has filmed objects demonstrating incredible abilities that have never before been documented. Thanks to his commitment and an original filming technique, he has produced results showing that the mysterious unidentified flying objects may have features we don't yet know about which are of extraordinary interest. One of the videos I consider the most important involves objects that are invisible to the naked eye and which can only be captured by using infrared vision. To do this, I developed a special technique using two video cameras. One films in the usual spectrum and the other films in the infrared spectrum. To use them both, I made a special rigging and placed one camera atop the other, training them on the same point, that is, the same focal distance, the same level of zoom. I frame the images so that they show the exact same thing. Therefore, what the normal camera sees is also what the infrared camera sees. This is very important, because it demonstrates that there are objects moving in the sky that are invisible to the human eye, and we can't perceive their presence. The surprising results achieved with this technique have aroused great interest in various parts of the world. Once I developed this technique for filming in infrared vision with both video cameras, news of it began to travel around the world. A French group, including some scientists, organized an investigation group and some research programs. I was amazed when Jaime Maussan contacted me and sent me an email informing me that they were going to create an investigation program in my name. The main program in this investigation will bear my name in honor of what I've created. They give it a prominent position on their European website, where they explain the technique I created and how it works. A few weeks ago, some people from Denmark came to make a short film, which will be submitted for a competition in a film festival connected to the UFO phenomenon. The large number of videos that the vigilantes have recorded shows that craft are flying through our skies with characteristics and flight dynamics that differ from the conventional features of aeroplanes or helicopters. And that's not all. These videos demonstrate that systematic and continuous observation of the sky can provide interesting documentation. Quite different from accidental amateur footage which tends to raise doubts. 
It's no coincidence that the vigilantes have respectable professional backgrounds. Yo creo que el escepticismo es una parte normal en el ser humano. I believe that skepticism is a normal part of human behavior. Many people don't believe in the existence of UFOs, and I think it depends on the simple habit of observing the sky. Quien mira y pone sus ojos hacia arriba y empieza no a ver sino a observar y dedica Those who look upwards and begin not only to see but to observe and dedicate time to this will start to realize that there are presences. There are presences that have nothing to do with objects we normally see flying, like aeroplanes, helicopters, weather probes, balloons, etc. Lo que a mí me ha llevado a volverme un vigilante. One of the things that drove me to become a vigilante of the sky was my work as a professional architecture photographer. Precisamente lo que es importante y lo que me ha llevado a hacer. In particular, what was important was that it led me to take good pictures and, as a professional photographer, my knowledge of light and shadow makes a difference. Es algo importante para poder ver a los objetos. It's a very important factor to be able to see the objects, knowing what time of day the light helps us, when the sun literally brings out the objects. Spheres and flotillas also make frequent appearances in the videos by Arturo Robles Gile, and they are truly spectacular. Where could these mysterious objects have come from? Some people believe they have captured the answer in a photograph. During the great wave of sightings in the 1990s, phenomena were sighted that amazed both direct witnesses and researchers. Video cameras captured flying objects capable of releasing an incredible number of spheres, giving rise to the flotilla phenomenon. At first, the classic luminous spherical objects were the ones to show this trait. Later, but still in Mexico, enormous tubular structures were sighted and filmed. Further light spheres came out of these irregularly shaped structures. This new chapter added new questions and mysterious elements to the world of ufology. Even the ufology experts can't explain these images. The objects are christened gusanas voladores, or flying worms, because of their appearance. They raise many questions. Where do they come from? What technology do they use? How can these structures appear and hover in the sky without any known flight mechanism? How can they contain and expel the number of spheres that have been filmed? A major step has been taken thanks once again to one of the vigilantes, engineer Arturo Robles Gila. Esa mañana yo subí a la azotea a pesar de que estaba muy nublado, subí a, a ver las condiciones climatológicas cómo iban a estar para en la noche. That morning I went out onto the terrace, although it was very cloudy, to check the weather conditions because that night there was going to be a lunar eclipse, which is very important from a photographic point of view. At the time, in 2004, there were a number of people here repairing the building, and we all witnessed it. But I was the only one who looked up to the zenith. I don't even know why I did it, as I usually made general observations all around. But on that day, I remember that I turned my head completely upward and I saw an object I couldn't identify. I saw a structure. At first sight, it looked like a mass, white and enormous. But to give you an idea of how large it was, it was like two jets put together. It was huge. At the time, I was already interested in phenomena discovered in the sky. I had my video camera and tripod in hand, and I began to film the object.
al hacer acercamientos con la cámara de video, me di cuenta que la estructura se movía, que no era una cosa que flotaba. Moving closer with my video camera, I realized that the structure was moving, that it wasn't simply floating. It was twisting, writhing. It contracted and expanded. And when I saw that it was beginning to expel spheres, it was clear to me that something absolutely incredible was happening. Entonces dije, bueno, ¿qué puedo, qué más so puedo I asked hacer? myself, what else can I do? I thought that photographs could be a tremendously important support, and so I took some. I remember that I took about 24 photographs. The high-definition images that Gila obtained mark an important breakthrough in the study of these spectacular unidentified structures. When I downloaded the photos to my computer, I realized that the structure appeared to be formed by thousands or hundreds of thousands of segments. It also had colored outer spheres. I'll be honest, at first I thought it might be a spectacular bunch of balloons. I talked about it with Jaime Mausan. I went to his office, and as soon as he saw what I had filmed, without having the slightest idea of what it was, he said, Arturo, what you've captured here is absolutely spectacular. There were those who were skeptical, whose unfounded argument was that they could be balloons. So, Jaime Mausan immediately phoned a very well-known performer here in Mexico City, who uses the largest balloons in production. When he arrived at the office and saw the images, he said, these aren't balloons, and even if they were balloons, a structure like this would require at least 57,000 balloons, possibly more. How could you possibly create a structure with 57,000 balloons without any gas escapes? And how could you let it fly upwards? Furthermore, you need a special permit, because a structure of that size needs a permit to fly, especially because in that particular area, it was very close to flight paths used by aeroplanes to turn into the airport. Para mí, ese fue el parteaguas. Ese Eva ni madre. To me, that was a breakthrough. The mother Ibani, as I call it. The mothership. The acronym Ibani stands in Spanish for Unidentified Aerial Biological Entity. And since Gila photographed them in high definition, sightings of Ibanis have been increasingly frequent. Los movimientos de estos objetos son realmente muy orgánicos. O sea, a mí me The movements of these objects seems to be organic. Cómo se mueve una serpiente o cómo se mueve una oruga. They remind us of a living being. Bueno, es exactamente la misma manera en que se mueven. ¿Por qué se mueven así? No lo sé. Quizá es su manera de navegar o de estar o de mantenerse. Maybe this is how they maintain stability in the sky. Realmente no sé por qué se mueven de la misma manera que ocurre en la Tierra. Con estos organismos. Por lo tanto, los hemos considerado entidades biológicas. We've called them unidentified aerial biological entities, or Ibani. And this biological aspect is the most important thing. They appear to be alive. I don't know if they are or not, but that's the sense you get when you see them on film. We do know that when we see an Ibani, we'll see spheres afterwards, which may show that there's some connection. These features become even more evident in the videos made by Arturo Robles Gila since then. The forms and behavior of these anomalous entities seem to be writing the most incredible chapter in the study of unidentified flying objects. Ebani 
An ibani is a tubular type entity that is also elastic. It's capable of twisting and writhing movements. It can move vertically and horizontally. It doesn't need engines to fly. It doesn't make any noise. And it doesn't leave a wake. Que yo los estoy observando e inclusive grabando. El propósito específico que tienen los Ebanis es de. The Ebanis appear to have a specific activity, expelling countless spheres into the atmosphere. On some occasions, they have moved from the place where they ordinarily appear and come towards this area. It's, sorry, it's as if they wanted to be seen, to be observed with greater precision. Thanks to my work as a photographer, this has enabled me to create videos that I believe are without precedent, even on an international level. The videos made by the vigilantes are just a small part of the large amount of footage showing the continuous activity of unidentified flying objects in the skies of our planet. The two most common questions are always the same, no matter where the phenomena are sighted. What are those objects in the sky? And should we be afraid of them? Giorgio Bongiovanni is one of the Italian scholars following the wave of sightings in Mexico very closely. The claims of ordinary citizens, military personnel, astronauts and scientists, and the analyses performed on a remarkable amount of photographic and video materials, including the testimony of contactees, whose experience has been proven to be real after several years. They all show that it's likely we're being visited by beings from space. They are passive, unaggressive visits, more concentrated in Latin America and in Mexico than in other parts of the world. But they occur all over the planet. This is happening in a period in which humanity is going through a difficult moment in its evolution. I believe that if clear, direct contact were to occur with these civilizations, it would lead to a truly profound Copernican revolution for us. I think that humanity could solve the serious problems in terms of social, political, economic and environmental justice, which are causing us to risk self-destruction. It would definitely be a new impulse for science and religion. It would bring about the end of the dogmatisms and dangerous fanaticism at the basis of many of today's wars. In fact, over many years of sightings, the UFO phenomenon has never been accompanied by any signs of aggression. One thing is certain, Mexico seems to play a central role in this saga that borders on science fiction. And the reason why is still a mystery. Perhaps the only clue is an ancient Mayan prophecy that tells of an encounter with the men of the stars. An encounter that would have begun in 1991 and may end in the year 2012. All we can do is wait with our eyes on the heavens.